Lunacy's space texture is unlike anything I've seen in a Source game before. I knew it was different the moment I saw it, but couldn't put my finger on why. There are such things as 2D skyboxes. They were first used back in the days of Half-Life 1, and in CSGO to draw stuff that's so far into the distance that it shouldn't move when you do. Stuff like stars, for instance. Or planets. But the stars and the Earth in Lunacy do move, so it's not your usual 2D skybox. When stuff moves in the distance, it's often the 3D skybox. So I visited that in this map by no-clipping out of the world. There are some buildings, and there's some hills and mountains. There's Lollywood. And behind that is a big dome of painted on sky. But no moon or stars. And ok, actually behind that there is a 2D version of the stars, but it doesn't move. Trust me, I checked. Turns out Lunacy is using a completely new technique, built into the dome's texture itself. Well, I say new, but it's just a cube map image with added parallax. But for Source, that's new. To get it to work, you literally have to add a line to the texture file called Moon Dome, which I'm fine with. Why should you care about all this? Well, for a start, I think it's a really cool effect. Even though I know it's just a 2D image being distorted, it still fools me into thinking it's 3D. I tried changing the amount of parallax. You can see here a normal amount of parallax, where it moves a bit when I do. But I coated other bits of this room in different parallax amounts, and you can see that as the parallax value gets higher, it moves faster and appears closer. Until the effect gets big enough that it looks about as close as if it was painted on the wall, at which point the parallax effect becomes useless. So we've established the limits of the effect. But can it be used for more than just distant scenery? What if we were to add this effect to other bits of the level as well? Most notably, reflections. Ah! Traditionally, Source has used cube maps for reflections. If you have a reflective window and run about looking at it, the reflection shown won't change. It kind of gives away that it's a static image. Ah! Source can do proper reflections, like in water, but because that's like a whole new world being reflected, it limits this to just one being shown at a time. Every mapper will try at least once to get around this limit by adding water to more than one surface. But it won't work. Try to add more than this and it messes up. But I still try it from time to time, just to make sure. So despite how tempting it is, you can't just coat every reflective surface in very small water. So what else can you do for reflections? Proper ray tracing would do it, but that would slow everybody's PCs down and it's not too suitable for a competitive game. Or a VR one. <laughs> screen space reflections do a good job of botching it, but they only reflect what's shown on screen, so they won't show what's behind you. Which is bad for reflections in windows and stuff, and can be more distracting than there being no reflection at all. So unfortunately, we'll just have to stick to good old fashioned cube maps. These are pre-drawn pictures of certain places in the level. They won't show people, and they won't update, even if the room changes what it looks like. But this parallax effect, if done right, can help to give the illusion that it's a reflection. If they changed all cube maps in a level to these, and did them well, it would make the reflections look a lot better, without slowing it down too much. I messed about with it to see what I could get away with, and the answer, in its current state, is... Not that much. Also, it seems like you're limited to one a level since the reflections are based around Source's 0, 0, 0 coordinates, so reflections get increasingly skewed looking the further away from this point they are. Unless your map is perfectly positioned and happens to be a spherical room, it won't ever properly match up. If you wonder why the sky is black, that's because it's actually the floor. To get the reflection to show what's upwards rather than downwards, I had to build an upside down version of the map and to put the cube map in there instead. Like I've said, this trick is pretty limited in its current state. Now it looks a bit better, but the moment we move from the starting position it bends and skews in a way that we know just isn't right. Remember, it's just a sphere showing a flat image, so there's only so much that you can do with it. At a glance, as long as the reflection is bumpy and blurred enough, it could look good enough, but as a mirror finish the limitations are too obvious. So I reduced the amount of parallax. Annoyingly, you'll have to adjust this for each and every reflection to ensure that it moves at a similar speed to the room that it's meant to be reflecting. This looks a lot better, but where the reflection meets the ground it still splays out way too much. So I changed where the map was relative to the 000 point. There was a 50-50 chance of choosing the right direction, so of course I got it wrong and ended up with an even worse skew. Though I've got to admit, it looks pretty cool when I move into the corner. In fact, it flips around so it's upside down again. Maybe I didn't need to build an upside down level. But moving the level the other way didn't work either. The only thing that made it look better was to leave a gap between it and where it was meant to be reflecting. As you can see from here, it looks pretty good. 
It doesn't stop the distortion, but makes it harder to see. I tried decorating the walls with mirrors as well, but they didn't work. Seems they'll need a separate cube map in a different position. But this didn't work either, they all seem to use the same cube map, even when told not to. And they all reflect from 000, and I wish that they didn't. I bet this stuff could easily be fixed on Valve's end. But until then, this was the best that I could manage. You know how I did it? Botching. Lots of botching. There's no science here, merely nice looking mistakes, and plenty of fun surprises along the way. Just don't get too close to it, or it will give away its secrets. And last, I did it to a large open environment, just to show you how it mutilates 3D stuff. So those are my attempts, but there are people who have made much better use of them than I have. A video by BM Cha, dating way back to 2013, shows how well it could work when properly scaled and shaped to the room it's meant to be reflecting. It's just a shame that Source has never seen it properly implemented like this. There is an article in the Valve Wiki discussing the technique and how it could be used to improve reflections by following the player's position instead of remaining fixed. And there's this cool paper about it from 2012, showing how they could be blended together to make for a half-decent effect. By comparison, Source 1 jumps between them depending on which one you're closer to. And, last but not least, there might be hope for the future. Of course there is with Source 1 because of Lunacy, but also with Source 2. Half-Life Alex looks to be the first big game for VR, with cutting edge graphics and everything. But how are they going to manage all this while maintaining the 90 plus FPS that VR requires, whilst also having reflections that look acceptable? As I've already said, ray tracing is too demanding, screen space reflections are too limiting, cube maps are too source one, but parallax corrected cube maps? Maybe. I've just got my hands on VR, and in Valve's free showcase, The Lab, there's a robot demonstration powered by Source 2. In the corner, you'll see this reflective glass surface. Peer into it, and you'll see what appears to be an accurate reflection of the room. If you didn't know any better, you might have thought it was ray traced. But look closely, and you'll realise that the reflection is not actually showing a proper room. What should be 3D walls are fake and 2D. Look, there's even a robot painted onto the ceiling. I think that Source 2, and by extension Half-Life Alex will use parallax corrected cube maps for reflections. And it can do this fast enough for VR, but well enough that, at a glance, it might actually look half decent. I guess come March next year, we'll know for sure. And you know already that I'll spend a stupid amount of time staring into the puddle just here to work out how they did it. I'm so sorry, baby.